Welcome to 2.5 Measures of Position, Part 2. Now we're going to be looking at individually at a data point and how far it is away from the mean and what's considered usual, unusual, so on and so forth. A z-score represents the number of standard deviations away the data point is from the mean. So um, we're going to talk about this a little bit in more length, not a little bit, a lot in more length in class. But basically, when we've got a normal bell curve, the mean, let's go with x bar, is right in the center. There's no deviations from that. The mean is just the center. We're going to move away from the mean. So here we have a z-score of 1, 2, or 3. And then we have a z-score of negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3. So what we're going to be doing is using the score of the data point that we have to determine how usual or unusual our data collected point is. So if it's one away and even two away, it's considered usual. When you start getting scores that are between two and three or negative two and three, you're starting to get to be unusual. And then when you get up here, you're just very, very unusual. So the majority of the population is going to be within the two standard deviations. But the closer to the average a score is, then the lower or the closer to zero the z-score will be. And again, we're going to talk about this in more length in class. So the z-score is just a measure of position. Um, and here, our population average, mu, is 66.40. So if you have a z-score that is a little above, okay, the mu would have a z-score of 0. If it's a little above, it'll probably have a z-score around 1. If it's way above, it could have a z-score of 3 or greater. Going the other way, if it's a little bit below, you're going to be under the average. You're going to have negative values. And the further below you go for a data point, the larger the negative value of your z-score. I know. Let's see what this all means and put it to good use. Um, okay. So the way you figure out what your z-score is, is you're going to take your data point, which is x. You're going to divide it by the mean for the population or for the sample, and you're going to divide it by the standard deviation. So I like to write my formula kind of up and down. It's x minus mu divided by the standard deviation. And using grouping, the numerator has to be cleaned up first or simplified. So in this situation, it looks like we want to know what this data point has for a z-score. So we plugged 68 into our equation, and we subtracted from it the mean. The mean is our mu, and then we divided it by our standard deviation of 3.95. And when we did that, we got a z-score equaling 41 hundredths, or 0.41. So remember, a z-score of 0 means there's not much difference from the mean, but if we have a z-score um, a 0.41, that's actually a really close score. It's not too far from the mean. And if you look at it, 68 is not much further, um, or not too far away from 66.4. So it's, it's a good z-score, meaning the person's quite average with their height. So now what we have is um, we're looking for a z-score of 63. A z-score of 63 is going to follow the same process. The z-score is going to equal... 63 minus mu, which is 66.4. And you're going to divide that by the standard deviation of 3.95. So go ahead and pause the video and simplify that. I know you're thinking, but the answer is right on the screen. But I want you to see by doing it yourself that when you simplify that, the z-score is going to be negative 0.86. Okay? So that's a little bit below average. A z-score of negative is always going to be to the left of the mean, so it's less. And if it's between 0 and 1, that's pretty usual. So the person who is 63 inches is not that far away from the mean. They're considered usual. 
So the z-score versus a standard deviation. The standard deviation measures how far away every data point is from the mean. So we, we're looking at every individual data point and seeing in total how far away are the data points from the mean. It's a measure of all the data. In comparison, a z-score is a measure of how far one data point is above or below the mean. So it's a measure of only one point. So although we're using the standard deviation in the calculation of our z-score, it's so we can take that one data point and see how does it deviate or how does it compare to all the other data points. All right, comparing different z-scores from different data sets. The table shows the mean heights and standard deviation for a population of men and a population of women. Compare the z-scores for a six-foot tall man and a six-foot tall woman. Assume the distribution of the, hearts are, the heights are approximately bell-shaped. Okay, so just remembering, the average z-score would be zero, so that means there's no deviation from the mean. Then we have one, two, three. Then we have negative one, negative two, and negative three. So we're going to compare each z-score to see which one, um, it, which, how they relate to each other, essentially. So we'll start with the first one for the men. Z equals, the data point that we have is that they are six feet tall. So six times 12 is gonna be 72 inches, because we're dealing in inches here. So 72 minus 69.9 divided by the standard deviation of three, and I'm getting this information from here in the six foot. So pause it and simplify it. So my numerator simplified to 2.1, and my standard deviation was 3. And when I simplified it, I got 0.7 as a standard deviation. So that means for the men, this person right here who's 6 feet tall, 6 foot tall is about 0.7 above it. So if you think about it, the average man is 69.9 inches tall, and we're comparing a man who's slightly taller than that. We would expect the z-score to be slightly higher than the average, so slightly higher than 0. So the z-score is 0.7. Let's see how the women fare. The z-score is going to equal, the woman is six feet tall, so 72 inches. Now, if you're looking at it, look at the average is 64.3, and the standard deviation is only 2.6. So my expectation is that a woman being six foot tall is um, more unusual than a man. So simplify your numerator and divide it by your 2.6. I'm hoping you're doing it as I am as well. So I get 7.7 .7 for my numerator and divided by 2.6 and I get a z-score of 2.96. Okay, so we're talking way over here for a z-score, 2.96. Now remember, anything between 2 and 3 is unusual. Above 3 is very unusual and look how close we are to 3. So I'm sorry, but if you're a woman and you're 6 foot tall, um, it looks like your height is quite unusual versus a man who's six feet tall is considered usual. It's, it's just a slight deviation from the mean. So that's how we use our z-scores. And again, we're going to use them a lot more in class. So I'll see you soon.